In 1850, my ancestors came to this country from Czechoslovakia, where they were fleeing being drafted in a war. On my father's side, they started a distillery that didn't do very well. On my mother's side, they started a bakery that lasted for generations. I feel my family's immigrant stories because I now work with immigrants as they begin their lives here. I myself was a foreigner in a foreign land. In high school, I was an exchange student and lived with a family in France. Growing up, our family hosted international guests for dinner as part of a homestay program. And in my corporate career, I worked with many international people. So it was no surprise that I was hired to lead an initiative to attract immigrants to come here to grow our population. We needed a name for this work. We didn't want to use the word immigration because it has both positive and negative connotations. So a group of us brainstormed, and we came up with the idea that we would call this mosaic. A mosaic is beautiful. It is welcoming. It is colorful, it is bold, and each one of us can be a little tile, whether we were born here or born in another country. So the mosaic is that big picture. Now I want to talk about that local individual aspect. This is a true story that was written in the mid-1900s by Professor Isley. Professor Isley was walking on a deserted beach and he saw starfish, thousands of them, stranded on the sand. At the far end of the beach, he saw a man who was throwing the starfish back into the ocean one by one. The professor walked down and he talked to the man and he said, why are you doing this? It doesn't make a difference. And the man said, it makes a difference to this one. After that, the professor reflected, and he realized something interesting. Not only did the act make a difference to the starfish, it made a difference to him because it gave him hope in humanity that one person can make that difference. So how is there a connection from starfish to immigrants? When immigrants come here, they have many challenges. But when someone helps them, they can be stars. And to the people who help them, you get a sense of humanity and hope. Think of the ocean as all the jobs that we have in this country right now that are unfilled. We have low unemployment, we have a aging population, and actually, we have a smaller percent of those adults that are actually of the working age, it has decreased from 67% to 65%. Where are we going to find people to fill all the jobs in this country? We can consider immigrants. The healthcare industry is an industry that has many job openings. We do have an aging population. The American Hospital Association projects that by the year 2033, we as a country will have a shortage of over 100,000 doctors, 200,000 nurses, and many openings for home health aides. We need people. Dr. Olga came to this country several years ago from Ukraine. There, she had been a medical doctor. Here, she was not going to be able to do that for the time and the cost of the retraining. So she looked for jobs, at least in the medical field, and she didn't find any, was very frustrated. With some introductions, though, she was hired as an administrative role in a medical group. And then she did the exams so that she now can do sonograms. She is so happy to be back in the medical field. And when she emails me, I am thrilled to know that she is progressing in healthcare here. Science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM. We have so many openings in this country. 
in the STEM fields. In our region alone, there are over 10,000 openings right now for tech companies. Where are we going to find STEM workers today? We can look to international students. In fact, approximately 50% of the international students have degrees in STEM fields, and they would like to work here. Mary came here from India. She did her graduate work, got her PhD. She then was the co-founder, and she's now the president of an agricultural technology company. I am so proud that an immigrant woman is the president of a company that is creating jobs like she is doing. <laughs> Entrepreneurs are often immigrants, and you may wonder why. There are two main reasons. First, they come here from another country, so they're more open to risks. And secondly, they sometimes can't do the job and the career they had in their home country. Actually, immigrants are 50 to 80 percent more likely to start a company than those of us born here. Julio came here from Peru. He left a corporate job and opened a retail store that sells fair trade goods from around the world. He then opened a second store, an online store. Not only is his business supporting his family, but his two stores are in redeveloped neighborhoods, so they are adding to that retail economic vitality, and this is so important. And I also feel a sense of gratitude because Julio and his business give back to our community as well. <laughs> refugees are a special kind of immigrant. Many refugees come to the United States on a humanitarian basis. They come through the United Nations, the State Department, to communities all over the country. Our country is authorized to accept up to 125,000 refugees this way for humanitarian goals. We also accept refugees when there's a foreign policy reason, for example, in Afghanistan. When the Taliban took over in Afghanistan, our military brought many people from Afghanistan to this country. Suleiman was working and studying for his MBA in Afghanistan. He was evacuated here with little more than a backpack, and now he is working for a solar company, and he is working and finishing his MBA. <laughs> Truly, refugees are such an asset to our country, and I am so impressed by the resilience of refugees. For those of you that would like to make a difference, I have two suggestions if you like to work at the big picture policy level. One is you can advocate on a national level that our country needs more visas for entrepreneurs and for STEM workers. We don't have an entrepreneur visa in this country, and many others do. And you can look within your own organization to see if you need translations for your website or for job applications so more talent will find its way to your door. If you like working at that individual level, what you could do is you could help with interviews. You could do mock interviews with a refugee or an international student. You could mentor a refugee, an international student, or even an international corporate executive who has transferred here. They would benefit by your advice. You cannot help all the immigrants. You can, though, make a difference to the one you do help, and you will gain hope in humanity as well. <laughs>